March Madness is upon us. A couple of that with the NBA season is going on, actually going to the playoffs. A better way to bet on those games and games in other sports like the Premier League and everything else, or even Major League Soccer, than betus.com, where you can get 125% of the sign-up bonus, which is up to $2,500 by using the pro the promo code TKT for the clown times. So what is other perks here? You can bet on the go. You can bet anytime, anywhere on your mobile device. You get fast pass or you get paid immediately every single time. And last but not least, you can you like, like you could do live betting where you can bet during the game, getting the early and the best lines. Again, use my promo code TKT for the clown times to get up to 125% of the sign-up bonus, which is up to $2,500. So again, uh, not to sound like a book of record, but go to betus.com where the game begins. Welcome to tonight's uh, NBA playoff edition of the Clown Hall Podcast. I'm Scott Burks. Hello, I'm my co host, Dwayne Nash. Please check him out on the yard. She's sports reps for all things HBCU sports. So, what's Sleazy Radio every Tuesday on Facebook Live? Please catch him, the coach, and Sweet Lou. And they're also on YouTube. So check them out there as well. I almost forgot that part. And check out his great work on heroesports.com and reps on all things if she has athletics as they pertain to HBCUs. As for me, please take me on the website. You see here, www.theclowntimes.net. And you can follow me on Facebook as well for what are you, smartphone, laptop, desktop, or UVR, and whatever that as may be. You just type that in, the Clown Times, and find me there as well. And speaking of the hat, Get the merch, please. Get that merch. Cafepress.com. Search for the Clown Time Sports. The actual link will be in the description underneath this video on YouTube. So you'll find it there as well. And in addition to the hats, you get some t-shirts, sweatshirts, all cups, all that good stuff. So it's all there on cafepress.com. Again, search for the Clown Time Sports. And once again, the link will be in the description. Uh, under under this video on YouTube, so you find it there as well. And one last thing, please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You'd be glad you did. We'll be glad you did. And also, please hit that bell underneath there after you hit the subscribe button. Just hit the bell so you get notifications of whether videos like this will be on the channel, so you can find it there as well. You can continue to support there as well. We've gotten over 370 uh, subscribers now. So we actually grew like uh, over five subscribers a week. So please keep it going. Again, I still with the small victories. So again, just keep it going. Um, and, you know, I know like a lot of people have been liking the uh, HBCU videos. So uh, yeah, so so we'll definitely keep that going for y'all. We're always going to get the people who like what they want. That's, that's what we're here for, right? So anyway, please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll all be glad you did. Okay, so before we get to the, the HBCU sports segment that we want to do, let's get to the NBA action because NBA players actually because you know it may be fantastic, but the officiating not so fantastic. We'll get to that in a moment. Exactly, just P U stink putrid. Oh my just god, putrid. Oh, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll save it in a little bit. But as far as let's talk about teams that we, that may or may not be in trouble over okay. the weekend. Right. Okay. Phoenix lost to Dallas last night. Um, series tied at two apiece. Both teams have held serve at home so far. Uh, I'm not worried about Phoenix because we're left for two weeks. A, I don't think that Chris Paul is going to only score five points again, or only four shots and foul out. I don't think that's going to happen. Again. And also, two, I don't think Dorian Finney Smith is going to go eight from 12 for three point range. With 24 points. I don't think that's just going to happen again either, right? So I'm not worried about Phoenix. I think Phoenix is going to come back fist. Um, and we'll get to the bad officiating like momentarily as far as the games this, this weekend. But, I, you know, I think between that and that young man, I think he was a high school heckling Chris Paul's mom and wife, um, it had to be escorted out. I think he's going to be pissed off in game five. And I think it's going to close down game, in game six on Dallas' home floor just to get back at it. So I'm not worried about Phoenix yet, right? 
But I'm starting to worry a little bit about Miami, okay? And the reason being is because the first two games of the series, if you recall, like, I know Miami's won them, but, you know, but they struggled a little bit in game, um, like in game um, one before they pulled away, right? And a little bit in game two before they pulled away. Like, they did those two without worry about Joel and B. The yeah. last two games, mm-hmm. game three was an asshole. Game four, they just got worn down by, by B. And, and plus, James Harden finally showed his ass up in the playoffs, right? Yeah. So, which, which was nice to see him finally do, right? But the point being that Miami, if you look at it from a personnel standpoint, I mean, Bam out of bio, he, he has so much heart. He plays so hard, but he's only 6'9", 6'10", 8". I give him six. Maybe 16, but I think mm-hmm. it's more 69. How's that going to vibe with Joel and B? Joel and B is seven foot two inches tall and thick. Yeah. I mean, that's Pause. barbecue chicken all day. If they they they, they try manning them up, they try yeah. to double team them, and other shooters been played by Harden, have them burn them. Like uh Danny Green had a side, there was a Danny Green sighting, if you can believe that. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is that. They tried zone defense against Joel and B. Joel and B ate them up. And I said earlier when they tried to double team, they defeated the shooters that they've been hitting because they get finally got open shots because of MB coming mm-hmm. in that touch down low. So I don't think Miami has a has an answer. Miami's relatively small compared to Philly. Yeah. So here comes the all important game five, right? This will tell us everything. Okay. I originally picked Miami to win at five for some reason because um, I say for some reason that's it because I'm trying to just fight. Um, you know, Joel and B, I didn't think he was going to play in game three. I honestly didn't think he was going to play in game three. But he got it out, played in game three with, uh, uh, with that mask. He was pretty effective. Yeah. And now he's getting, now he's in the groove. And now, not only am I, you know, you know, I, you know, in, 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 in like before I found out about uh, MB's injury, keeping mm-hmm. it out, I originally had Miami at six. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm here to say, I'm afraid I was, I was totally wrong because I don't think Miami has an answer for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they do, dude. And if they do, when we're going to see it. I mean, I know Sportsman is a hell of a coach, uh, you know, between him and Pat Riley running things in, in Miami. I mean, Miami, the culture is great. I mean, it's all about accountability. They, they prepare well. They're overachievers. Yeah. I just don't see how they can overcome the beat because they have yet to have an answer for the series. I'll say this, right? Um, I felt like you coming into the series that it might go five. It'll be a gentleman's sweep, six games at the most between these two teams, especially with Joel B being out. Didn't know necessarily he'd be back for game three, but the things that I thought would be constants, um, in game four showed that, well, in games three and four showed that they weren't, right? right? I was expecting better play from the rest of the Heat. We didn't see it in games three or four. We need somebody other than uh, Jimmy Butler to get them buckets. And, and, and that's been an issue. And then game four, the thing that um, I've been harping on for a very long time, ever since he became a member of the 76ers, is, yo, mm, James Harden. Where does Bama at, right? Right. Hmm. Somehow, he, some way, he decided he's going to show up in game four and be the James Harden that everyone expected this James Harden to be and how this 76ers team to look. The scary thing is, this is what a lot of people was afraid of when these two guys got together in, in beat and Harden. Mm. This is the thing that I'm, I'm not necessarily completely afraid of because I want to, I'm, I'm going to need to see this more consistently. Right. Right. Now let's run over um, Harden's numbers over the, over game <clears throat> four, a little bit more. Okay. 31 points, eight for 18 from the field, six of 10 from three. He had a night shooting from three point. He yeah. also had seven um, boards and, and nine um, assists, right? Right. The last time James Harden scored 
at least 30 points was March 29th in a loss against the Milwaukee Bucks. This Bama has only put up 30 points <laughs> five times in 2022. He's only scored over 30 points five times in this calendar year. And Isn't we're in the beginning of May. That's yes, wild. Right? That's, that's freaking wild, dude. Yes. Game's hard. Only ha- yes. Unbelievable. And it's only happened two times with the Sixers. And I told you which two times those were. So, okay. James Harden could come out and, and, and shock me and do this a couple of more times throughout this playoff run. I don't necessarily anticipate it, but if he doesn't, and I don't expect Tyler Hero to have another night like he had in game four. I expect him to be better. I don't expect mm-hmm. uh, Bama Bayou to be confused in game five. And I don't expect this entire roster to look the way that they have and shoot poorly in the second half going forward in this series which is why I'm still going to stick with the Miami Heat in six. But um, if they do, I'm going to say, uh uh-oh, for the the Philadelphia 76ers, especially Mm -hmm. if this was the game that James Harden needed to turn it on and and excite the the, the Philly faithful and make this run that everyone expected them to do. But I will say this. It was Mother's Day. You know, Ship Club probably wasn't open on Mother's Day. What was he going to do but other than make buckets? Oh, no, my I'm just saying, goodness. man. It is what it is. And then Wait, is that the tin for your hat on? Is that the <laughs> <laughs> and, and then heading back to my Anna. Oh, hey, I, I hear, um, what's this, uh, 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 Tootsies? Is that, is that the name of the club? I don't I mean? know. I haven't been to one of those gentlemen clubs in several years. I uh, you know, but I, I hear it, whatever it is, it's a very large gentleman's club that's the size of a Costco that runs 24 hours a day. It, that was my facial expression, too. And, a strip yeah. club is the size of a Costco. That's that's what I heard. That's what I heard. I'm almost afraid. I got questions and I'm almost, I'm almost afraid to ask. Them. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I've never been. <laughs> I've just been told. That's the word on the street. You know. Word on the street. You know, and, and, and certain things I kind of, you know, and there's a reliable source, you know, so I, I go oh, ahead Lord. and, and kind of lead towards that. But I was, yeah, that's the thing. If, and, and that's a big if, because God knows if you watch this show enough, I don't trust James Harden in the playoffs. And right. based upon what I just told you, I don't necessarily trust him to put up another 30 piece anytime soon either. The thing is, though, if he can give you 25, Philly might be dangerous, but that right. means Joel's going to have to give you 30, but they're also going to have to rely on, like I said before, the Heat to continuously shoot bad. And, and that's, again, a lot of variables. I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen enough in order for them to uh, to take this series yet. Yeah. I mean, you make a great point about Miami not shooting the ball well. I mean, it doesn't help to, to go as cold as it if you feel, right, while not having an answer for uh, Joel and B. Let me just pull up the stats right quick. So I'm looking at it right now. I mean, outside of Jimmy Butler, who went bananas, yeah, he had what 42 20 from the field at 40 points. Yeah, the bio Bam had 21 points at out of 12 shooting. But outside of that, I mean, as even with that, the team as a whole shot like around 46 percent. They're only seven to 35 from three. Yeah. Wow, that's just, they were horrendously bad. And if you look at the brothers, is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the other squad members, outside of Butler, like, outside of Butler and Bam, Kyle mm-hmm. Lowry only shot three of 10. Yeah. Struce, or whatever the hell his name was, only two of five. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. E.J. Chuck was only three of seven. Tyler Hero was only four of 12. Yeah. Oladipo was only three of nine. Mm-hmm. And Vincent is, was only one of six. So you make a good point about Miami being cold from the field and being able to, especially for the role players, pick back up once they go back to game five of Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just saying they have to find an answer to it. Yeah. They have to find an answer because, I mean, you, I mean, it sure it only takes one a moment in, like in a game to get out of a shooting slump collectively because it's, it's contagious except for maybe game four. When Butler and Bam's uh, hot shooting was not contagious to that squad, but I, I, I mean, you, I mean, they say that you know, um, 
role players play a lot better at home, especially in, especially in the playoffs. But they still need to find an answer for Joel, and they have to find an answer for because right now they have this is a pretty small team that can't really check them. And, and you know, if I if I were um uh if I were coach coach Foster right quick mm-hmm. to help the cold shooting, mm-hmm. bring back Duncan Robinson. Yeah, I know he's been on the bench because of his poor defensive play in the series, but. Like uh, going into the series, especially, but bring him back. Yeah, bring him back. I mean, he's a he's he's only one of the more prolific shooters this year. He <laughs> ain't, and they signed that big ass contract in the offseason. They had to know they knew it was a defensive liability, but they signed him. He signed for his uh, shooting powers. So, if any time this begs for a return of Duncan Robinson, it would be Game Five. Yeah, kept going back to the crib. You've had your, your team has faced shooting woes. Yeah. It would be a nice charge. But I'll, I'll retort your start, your statement about stopping MB with this. Okay, okay, maybe you don't stop him. Let him go off. Stop everybody else. Because I think that's a doable thing. Matter of fact, I think you can stop what well, Danny Green has shown us at times that he can stop himself. Right. So has James Harden. So if you can go ahead and and and, and slow them down just enough and stop everybody else, you can go ahead and get back into game five and get back into the series and, and regain lead. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying. So we just have to see about that but, but, because, I, I mean, it's, game five is huge. Yeah. Whenever, yeah, especially whenever any time, anybody a team ties two games peace, game five becomes the, that becomes the series ship because it's the best out three of them, right? Most definitely. So... We have to see, but again, I got to see Miami pick up their shooting and find an answer for 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 MB because it's it's going if they if they don't have an answer for him in Game Five, it's a wrap. Yeah, even the Sixers, even Doc Rivers would chuck away <laughs> time to win to wrap up a series. Hopefully, uh, if, if they do take Game Five of Miami, so we'll just have to see about that. But this other game, this other series that's going on right now, Boston Milwaukee. I've long said, even though before the playoffs, I said the East is so wide open, the top either of the top four teams can come out and make some noise in the finals. Right. Um, but I I really think the winner of the Boston Milwaukee series is gonna is gonna represent the East at this point. Uh, I really do. And right now, it's shaping up to be the most, as as I predicted, the most competitive series in these playoffs. And you know, they let, let me ask you something. And this can we can segue to the official. That last foul on um, Marcus Smart, when he seemed to be in the in the motion of shooting the three to tie, when they called the foul before the after shoot, which I thought was I could kind of see it. But I thought he was going to have to shoot. What do you think? Was he going to have to shoot him when he, when he was fouled, like when he went to the foul line? Late? My God, man. It's it's one of those things, man. It, it depends upon who you are. But you, you are asking me. Huh, I, I guess you can go ahead and say that he was. I'll go ahead and say that he was. <laughs> let's take this conversation. But I, but I, I will say this, right? Mm-hmm. That game should have never been that close. Yeah, I know. You know, um, Milwaukee... <laughs> Had a middle collapse in the, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and allowed that game to be yeah. that close. Right, you know, right. dude, as big as they were up in 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 the fourth quarter, in the fourth quarter, that is something that you just don't do. But I will say this though, you know, as as on the flip side to that, as badly as Boston played, they shot what under thirty seven percent from the field. Correct. A, a little bit over twenty seven percent from three. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Tatum and Smart were a combined five of twenty-seven from the field, right? Right. With a combined nineteen points, and they were held to seventeen points in the third quarter. Yet they only lost by two. Yeah, that Dude. speaks volumes on that fourth quarter collapse by Milwaukee, and Milwaukee is capable of having them types of collapse every yeah. now and again, more so than they should. Which is why I, I still worry about Milwaukee. 
Right. Especially without Chris Middleton being there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Man. I'll, well, I'll say this. I want to ask you. I'll say this. Boston lost by two. And that's what Tatum, Geo point going four of 19 from the field. Over for six of three. If Tatum were to give you a little bit more, didn't have to give you his day's average, but just a little bit more. Boston wins that game. Yeah. Boston would win. The, Boston wins that game if Tatum himself were, were giving the team a little bit more. Because J, Jalen Brown had twenty seven points. He was hot. Yeah, he was eight, he eight or sixteen from the field, but that was but he was one to five from three. But Al Horford, he had a back to the future moment. He scored twenty two points, nine of seventeen shooting, four or seven from three, mm-hmm. and sixteen rebounds. I mean, he he played well. I mean, those two guys played well. If they, if the tail would have given them a little bit more, just a little bit more, Boston wins that game. Which, yeah. which has to give the Celtics confidence if you're a Celtics fan. Has to, has to. And to your point, you know, we kind of touched on it after game one, right? So if you combine their two losses, you know, in, in, in games one and in games three, both Tatum and Smart were a combined 14 of 56 with a combined 50 points total in that win. Jason Tatum alone in that win had 30 by himself. But if you, mm-hmm. if you look at that win, um, Tatum and Jalen Brown shot a combined 21 of 38 for 59 points combined. So to your point, if Jason, uh, if Jason Tatum can have just a, a, an average day, Boston is capable of winning these games. So, yeah, he, he can't keep playing the way he's playing these, these games um, when he's off, like the way he is. So, yeah, that, I, I, I can't explain it. Can you explain it, Scott? What do you think is the issue or, or what, what do you think the issue has been in those two losses for Boston in, in terms of Jason Tatum and the shooting? I don't know. I, I, I think that Tatum, this is Tatum's chance to be, this is, Tatum's chance to have his moment. Yeah. We've always talked about him being a virgin superstar for the past how many years? Ever about since three, four season. years now. Yeah. Ever since his rookie season when he was this close to sending LeBron James home in the yeah. Eastern Conference Finals of Game 7 um, as a rookie. But I, I, I mean, you know as a Knicks fan, I hate the Celtics, right? But the mm-hmm. thing is, is that I'm, I, I love Tatum's game. I respect this game. He works hard. He's a Mamba mentality guy. He's a big Kobe guy. And it showed from time to time. It showed against, against Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, it's like, it's, it's like that tease. It's like that glimpse of where he could be in the playoffs. Because this is where you yeah. make a name, man. This is where stars become superstars in the playoffs. Chips, with, with, with chips in the middle of the table. Everything's on the line. What do you do? And he just came up short in the, in the two losses. So, applied to the Bucks. And granted, we all know Milwaukee's a great defensive team. We we know mm-hmm. this, and we know that they're long and tall. We we know this. This is a different animal than Brooklyn. Yeah, but Tatum has to give me something again. If Tatum gives me gives us more, just a little bit more than four of nineteen for the field, Boston wins game three. Exactly. But to your point, right? The question was asked during the um during the Brooklyn series mm-hmm. whether or not Jason Tatum is a top 10 player in the league right based upon what we've seen in those two losses against um Milwaukee a top 10 player doesn't play like that I'm sorry right, right. you're right you're absolutely right again because this is where superstars are made yeah this is where superstars are made Jalen Brown showed up Al Horford the OG showed up mm-hmm. where was the young lion Tatum yeah where was he at? So this is it, but this is it for Tatum. I mean, they're playing right now. Let me check the stats so far in this game. I'm clicking on right now. Boston's down by six in the third quarter. Still competitive. It's still in there. Uh, Jason Tatum is playing a bit, but he's 16 from the field. Um, you know, he's around 40 some odd percent, two or seven from three. Um, at least he's having a more productive night. Yeah. It's just that, you know, they're still shooting terrible. Both teams are shooting horribly. They'll be like Milwaukee shooting under thirty nine percent. Boston shooting barely over forty percent from the field. Oh my god! So both teams, it's like a ninety. Okay, so uh, 
because it's late in the third quarter, 71 65. But again, this is Tatum's moment. If Tatum's that dude that we think he is, that he mm-hmm. believes he is, yeah. This is time to show up. This is time. Exactly. But, you know, to your point, at least back then, man, we, we knew that the poor shooting came from tough defense and playing a tough series. Right. These dudes ain't playing physical, so that's not the reason why they just right, right, why right, they're right, shooting right, bad. Right. They just shooting bad because right. they're shooting bad. Right. Um, but this is one of these <laughs> games that, in my opinion, if you're asking me, favors Boston based upon what we've seen out of them during this series. You keep, mm-hmm. You're capable of keeping it close. Um, and Milwaukee shoots bad like that, especially in the fourth quarter. Look for Boston to come back. Yeah, because this is game three is right for the taking for Boston. Yeah, and tonight I mean, Milwaukee just went up by by eight, but still, it's early, it's in the middle, of the, it's late in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. I think I think this Boston again. Boston goes come out and shoot in some one way or another. So we'll, we'll get we'll see what happens there. Uh, but last but not least, the, the the series that folks been talking about more these days, Golden State and Memphis. All these injuries, man. I for that, all these hard fouls, the injuries. I for an eye for an eye, right? First, it was Draymond taking his shot. Then it was Dylan Brooks taking his shot on Gary Payton the second. And then uh, Jordan Poole looked like he tweaked, caused the need to tweak for, of, uh, of John Morant. So much for the cold, right, Steve Kerr? <laughs> so much for that cold. So this is this is turning to this is a low key and a very intriguing series because two teams that didn't historically have rivalry vibes, there's some bad blood there. And John Morant not going to game three. Is it too premature to declare the series over in Golden State's favor? I had Golden State winning six anyway. But the, is, it, is it is it like can, is it too premature to say that this this series is officially over? Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that it would be just yet. But um, the way that um, God Memphis normally plays during um, uh, when, when whenever John Morant is out, I think they were like twenty and fifteen. Their record is a whole lot better than what I expected it to be with no John. The thing is, though, this is playoffs against a very talented team. And and um, you have no job. It's a possibility they end up losing to five. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I think Golden State wins Game Four. I don't want to say it's going to be an ass whooping. I think Memphis is going to show some heart. I think they're mad, but they don't have John Morant, and Golden State did not. That still does not have an answer for John Morant. So. With that being said, they're going to lose by double. They be in Memphis. The Griffins is going to lose by double digits. It probably won't be as bad as Game Three because again, they're going to have some. I think they're going to have some fight. I think they're going to, they they could be playing bad. But I think it's going to be a 12, 13 point loss for Memphis. And 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 let's be real. If it wasn't for John Morant's heroics in Game Two, we could be looking at a sweep, which is why I think it's over. I think it's over. I think it's over. Now, I was uh, people may counter that and say, "Hey, hey, 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 dummy!" Um, it came one. If John didn't blow that layup, they'd be they'd be they'd be up two one. Memphis would be up two one. But again, Golden State played well in Game One. Um, and they played well in Game Two. It's just that you know Morant. They had no answer for John Morant. And this 47 points was the difference. If he scores a little bit less than 47 points, they, they're, they're down 0-3 in this series. So I said I said before <clears throat> the series began that I think Golden State's experience of win over Memphis's euphemism, youthful enthusiasm, if you will. And it's playing out that way. But I think it's going to be leading to intriguing matchups in the future, i.e. next year. Oh, most definitely. Oh, next year is yeah. going to be one for the books. Yeah. Yeah, because, again, this is – it's funny how a series, a playoff series, could make a, a, a two teams have bad blood. We see it in the NFL, Chet Raiders, Steelers in the 70s. Um, 
and the other player like 49ers, Cowboys in the 70s and 80s and 90s. <laughs> right? And Broncos, Browns in the 80s. So, you know, it, it, it happens. It, yeah, it happens. but it's a little bit different back then as uh, compared to now because of free agency and then guys not necessarily staying in places for long sure, periods of that's time. Fair. That's fair. And then, of course, players just not liking other players. You know, right. with, with this AAU mentality that a lot of these guys, these young guys currently have, they all buddies. They all either played against one another or want to play with one another um, throughout their career, be it AAU, high school, college, um, or even in, in the league. At some point in time, you know, they, they buddies with somebody on the other side of, 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 of the floor from them. And, you know, they good buddies. They hang out during the summers or whatever. Yeah, it's different. It's different. But, um, yeah, this, this competition and wanting to win a title is what makes these rivalries just a little bit more different, a little bit more hungry um, than what it has been in recent years. Um, because everybody's, of course, chasing a championship. So, yeah. Right, right, right. That's true. So, it may be seen, man. It may be seen. But, uh Let's see. After Boston, uh, Memphis, and Golden State play tonight, <laughs> so we yeah. to see. We with no, see. with no Steve Kerr because Kerr. There got you go, COVID. COVID. Yeah, he's out yeah. COVID. So got it's, that it's thing, thing. Yeah, you got the you got the wrong. Um, let's just see. So, so we'll just for that we we'll just close the books there on the NBA playoffs and head on to the HBC Sports Center. Now, remember we talked about last week. We talked about that lawsuit. We talked about all that drama surrounding, uh, you know, they, it was the last week or week before, I forgot. But anyway, the point is, is that, you know, with, with the squat going on with, with HBC one or, or whatever, um, you got some news. Man, the, listen. Some other stuff that's been going on. So I'm going to give you the floor and I'll be preparing myself mentally to be flabbergasted because I heard it's some, it's some shit. So go ahead, man. But where do you want me to start? Do you want me to start with the fluff, or do you want me to go deep, deep, deep into the, the filth? Let's get dirty, man. Might as well get dirty. All right, All right we're going to go ahead, Red. I miss it anyway, let's so let's dirty. get dirty. All right, let me go ahead, <laughs> go with the gun straight out the, out the pack. Yes, First sir. and foremost, let's start with the swack. Oh, my God, this entire situation going on with the swack and with Florida A&M and how insane this entire thing has gone. So for those who haven't been watching and haven't been keeping um, <laughs> keeping pace on the, or, or, or keeping a tally of what's been going on over the past month, month and a half, it's been it, it came out last month uh, in, in March that um, the SWAC signed a deal with Byron Allen and his media group um, to start broadcasting all of their sporting events on HBCU Go, a streaming network that will be supplied by, a free streaming network that will be supplied mm. by Barbara Nowlis Media Group. Right. The issue is, is that Florida a and and Grambling have both signed, um, well, had agreements with the Urban, um, the, the UEN, let me make sure I get that correct. Yes, the, um, we have one day my eyes are going to work right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we all... <laughs> I know, right? Man, you, you would think I would notice uh, by now the Urban Edge Network, UEN, right? Mm -hmm. So they had that agreement um, with UEN. <clears throat> Oddly enough, weeks before the announcement of the SWAC making the agreement with Byron Allen and his media group, right? Mm -hmm. Now, with all of the fallout, letters being sent out by um, the SWAC commissioner to the institutions, the one talking about how um, these outside deals shouldn't be taking place and it's the potential that these outside deals could affect their current deal with, with Byron Allen's media group and with HBCU Go. And so we're still waiting for the fallout from that because, of course, there's a, a pending lawsuit um, involving that. Right. Ever since that situation went down, um, uh, 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 Courtney Gauthier, the form, well, the, the athletic director over at uh, Florida A&M decided to resign um, in the right. middle of April, right? This is wild. Yes, right? So I told you guys a week ago 
Um, I didn't want to speculate on anything or on why he may have gotten fired because I don't deal with speculation. Sorry. Correct. But there was an investigation that did happen and, uh, uh, and all of this stuff has decided to come out over the past week of, of about said investigation that Florida A&M has run against Courtney Gauthier and his involvement while they're at Florida A&M. Um, with that said, you know, um, Florida A&M decided to initiate an investigation into former athletic director Courtney Gauthier. Oddly enough, um, it seems as though that this uh, investigation, the, the report from said investigation, came out a day before Gauthier decided to resign which mm. means that the investigation was going on while he was still there, which leads me to believe, again, speculation, I'm, I'm, I'm touching speculation a little bit this time, right? Right. That this investigation probably started once it was announced that there was a conflict of interest with um, the Urban Edge Network, the HBCU um, Plus um, network that, that was going to be broadcasting the Florida AM and Grambling events and with the SWAC and their deal that they did with HBCU Go. So it says here, you know, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So shortly after, um, like I said before, Gauthier announced his, um, his resignation, Florida AM decided to do an investigation with a law firm, Gray Robinson, out of uh, Florida um, to investigate the athletic department under Gauthier's leadership. The report outlined numerous failures, which involved unauthorized, un, with, in, which in, yes, see, I'm starting, I see your eyes already. Um, the report outlined numerous failures, which involved unauthorized licensing deals, some which we've already talked about on the show before, unauthorized hiring of personnel and NCAA violations. The report also said Gauthier created a hostile workplace by failing to report, well, I'm sorry, failing to work cooperatively with other fan new departments. Mm. Now, this is coming from um, the report. It is clear from reviewing emails between Gauthier and other Florida and administrators that Gauthier was aware of his lack of authority and still failed to obtain the necessary approvals um, before entering the potential legally binding tra uh, transactions as it pertains to the unauthorized licensing deals. Um, so it's kind of weird with all of this investigation and all of this stuff going down. Um, like I said before, the report was released the day before Gauthier resigned on the 20th of April. Then as of Friday, less than three weeks after resigning for Florida A&M, um, the Democrat, which is the newspaper in Tallahassee, Florida, learned right. and, and confirmed that Gauthier um, is now joining Tulane <laughs> as their senior associate athletics director. That was but oddly, Yes, right? But oddly enough, Gauthier's contract was set to expire in seven months anyway at Florida a and So I don't know if they were going to um, <laughs> if they were going to re-sign him or no, but it's, it's all I'm going to say is this, it's a, this HBCU Go situation versus the Urban Edge Network, this may have been the catalyst to them asking him to resign, right? So, like I After said all before, that, yeah. yeah, so here's the, again, the top, for those who missed it, the brief timeline, <laughs> Florida a and first announced their deal with uh, Urban Edge Network, which was, that, that announcement was made on February 15th. A week right. later, Grambling announced a similar deal with Urban Edge Network as well. And then, of course, the deal, like I said before, between HBCU Go um, and the SWAC was announced on March 15th. And then, moving on, fast forward about um, what's that? Uh, a, a, a week? I'm sorry. Actually, not even a week. Um, fast forward a month, an attorney representing uh, Urban Edge Network, uh, the parent company of HBCU League Plus, sent a notice to the SWAC on April 14th. And then, of course, that's when the SWAC sent out its letter stating all the issues that they were dealing with contractually with PepsiCo and with HBCU Go and the Byron, Byron Allen Media Group. So here is the outline of failures by Gauthier that was discovered by Gray Robinson uh, Law Firm. 
like I said before, one, authorizing Peak Sports, which is a marketing firm, um, to enter into an, a, a marketing firm which actually handles contracts between universities and other marketing entities to sign these deals. Um, and in some cases, even medium marketing, marketing deals like we're, we're discussing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, matter of fact, Peak Sports has contracts with several uh, institutions throughout the country, including the likes of uh, Delaware State and a few other HBCUs as well. So like I was saying, uh, number one failure was authorizing Peak Sports to enter into an agreement with Urban Edge Network to post fam new content on UN streaming services. Number two, this is the one I was completely uh, uh, um, oblivious to until lis- listening to a couple of shows last week. Um, the authorization of the New York racing team, does that sound familiar? Um, to place trademark fam view logos on their race car without unauthorized, well, without authority and without prior consultation with the, uh, the, the, with the communications department of Florida a and Remember when I told you that Florida a and did that deal with New York racing team, the racing team that's owned by an HBCU alum with Greg right. Biffle driving the car yeah. at Daytona 500? Greg Biffle, I think, yeah. Yes. That apparently was a violation. Wow. And then, of course, the other things that are shown on the outline attempted to hire coaches Without FAMU uh, policies and regulations, or coordinating in advance with the with human resources, providing meals to athletes in violation of NCAA regulations, and failing to work cooperatively with other departments. I'm not going to touch on the other three. I'm only going to touch on the main two because it deals with money and a lot of money and a lot of contracts that have transpired and moved from place to place, and a lot of what's the word I'm looking for here? Contradiction. Mm -hmm. A lot of contradiction (laughs) on who may have and who may not have seen said contracts. So going back to the UEN HBCU Go thing, like I said before, Florida and them enter into a sponsorship and advertising sales contract with Peak Sports Management in January of 2021. So they have been with Peak Management for over a year now. Mm -hmm. In order for them to get into that, that, that contract with with peak sports, they had to get the approval of the board of trustees and the university president there at Florida a and Remember I said that because that's going to come into play a little bit later on. All right. So it says- you There's know, more, as they say. <laughs> yes. You know, the agreement was reviewed by the general uh, counsel's office and approved by the FAMU board of trustees. The agreement gave peak the exclusive rights to market and secure sponsorships and advertising agreements on behalf of Florida a and let me repeat that. The deal with Peak Sports gave them the authority to negotiate deals for both sponsorship and advertising agreements on behalf of Florida a and which is, of course, part of the SWAC. You know, in full, like I said before, in February uh, 2022, they had the agreement with Urban Edge Network, which was done through who? Peak Sports. Again, an entity that the board of trustees and the president of Florida A&M signed on. So that means they agreed upon Peak Sports to make these type of deals. You know, I guess it's their consensus. They went ahead and hired them to do so, right? But again, in order for this stuff to go through, you have to also go back and get the agreed consent from the board of trustees and from the president in order for this stuff to go through. I doubt very, very seriously it was only going through Gaucher, but I digress, true, true. right? So it says here, the Robinson report stated that Gaucher and his team began direct negotiations with Urban Edge Network despite not having the authority to do so. That's crazy. Again, Grambling announced a very similar deal to U, uh, UEN during that same point in time. And so I found it interesting. Everyone's talking about this deal uh, with, with, with Florida a and and Grambling <clears throat> doing these deals outside of uh, the conference or, or instead of doing it along with the conference. Um, Brett Rutherford of WFSU, which is a, um, a public radio station there in Tallahassee, basically says that, um, let me make sure I quote this dude correctly. 
uh, 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 um, where you at? There we go. No Division One school has agreed to a broadcasting deal individually. I, I see the last confusion point again in your face. So say the last, say the last sentence he, for, the, for the people in the back. He basically says that you know this is a reporter saying this. No Division One school has, um, has agreed to a broadcasting deal individually outside of their conference. Um. I can think of what school that's done so. Can you name that school, Scott? Presently? Mm-hmm. Well, a school that has made a, a broadcasting deal outside of its conference. Oh, that's like FAMU and uh, Grambling, right? Those two? No, one more. One big one. One big, big one. No the name. No, well, no, no. No name's not in the conference. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you could, uh... Texas. Oh, that's right. The Longhorn Network. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I'm like, dude, what do you mean no school has done this before? University of Texas has most definitely done it. And then I've seen people try to use University of Texas as a model for Ford to AM and Grambling to follow. Eh, I don't know, player, because we, we've seen the autonomy that University of Texas has done or has, has decided to, 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 to live behind and what they ended up doing to the Big 12. If, right. if, if I'm the swack, I'm most definitely not allowing that to happen. Of but course. again, that's a good point. They don't want to be yeah. the Big 12. They don't want to be the Big 12 life in terms of one school, or in this case, two schools, of FAMU and Grambling. Grambling should know this, but we're Grambling doing their own thing because we've seen what happened to the Big 12 eventually yeah. down the line, right? Yeah. About to go to where the Dodo, but continue. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no one Bama bigger than the group. Right, but they felt as they though that they were. But the thing is, I will get into the details of that a little bit later on. Oh, <laughs> God, like I said, when I said it was messy, it was messy. Okay, moving on. Um, boom, 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 boom. I swear. Okay. However, Gray and Ro Gray Robinson maintains that the contract was never executed between Florida A and M and U E N, and that peak. Um, I'm sorry, peak marketing. Um, had entered into the contract with UE again. Peak Marketing did it, not Florida A and M. But right. who gave Peak autonomy to do so? Florida A and M. Huh, but I digress. <laughs> huh. But it also says emails indicate that Gaucher was aware of the Peak UE in agreement and that it allowed UE to stream FAMU content on HBCU League Pass without. A, a properly approved licensing agreement with FAMU. My thing is, though, if you've already made this agreement with Peak, chances are you've already made this agreement with, by proxy, you've made this agreement right. with UEN. And right. then my guess is either Peak is, is, is working renegade or <laughs> they had to contact somebody. For, they, they only contact, they only contacted Gaucher. Yeah, yeah. They, was they, the only point yeah he's not the only he's not doing this by himself you're absolutely right he's not doing this but i digress himself. you're you're right about that you know i digress so moving on um gochet counters that the agreement is between peak and uen his signature is not on the agreement and that no actions in it have been in that's the other thing too no actions within said contract have been initiated as of yet the contract right. also explains that swack media rights supersede the agreement it's crazy. That's insane. That's so oh insane. my God. Goshe added that the content was to stream Florida AM coaches shows, marching 100 performances, athletic scrimmages, and all the content that all the content that is owned by Florida and U Athletic Department as is governed by its bylaws. So according to Goshe, the only thing that was supposed to be broadcasted on HBCU. Uh, plus, was shows that don't that aren't necessarily games, which meant, according to Gaucher, that it's not a violation of the Slack agreement. So this right. is basically being played out in the court of public opinion for you to, to, I guess, guess who is on the side of right in this entire situation. But in addition to um, an additional protection when it comes to the marketing rights, according to the contracts obtained by the doc by the Democrat, UEN 
had to receive approval from Peak and Gaucher to stream F uh, uh, FAMU content. Gaucher that said that no such approval was given. Mm. So yes. there wasn't even any approval yet given to you in yet to even broadcast anything. But of course, they were out, I guess, doing their due diligence on marketing these games. So I don't know if there was lack of clarity on what UEN was supposed to broadcast, mm -hmm. if there's a lack of clarity from Gaucher on what it is that they were supposed to broadcast. I don't I don't know. This is crazy. Somebody, somebody lied. Yeah, that's what Sam, that's what Sam is on. Somebody lied. <laughs> somebody lied. But this is where it gets crazy, even more man. intriguing, right? So that was with the UEN thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and touch on the the, the, the racing aspect real quick. You know, the four, like I said before, FanU's logo appeared on the Greg Biffle's car, right. and, uh, along with the, uh, several other HBCUs too. Grambling, Florida a and Stillman, Morehouse, all of these institutions all <laughs> have deals with <laughs> Peak Sports and with UEN. I digress. This is where it gets interesting though. You know, um, according to Graham.edu, of course, who also has a deal, a, a similar deal with New York Racing, uh, mm -hmm. the number 44 car, which is driven by Greg Biffle, is a, uh, you know, it's a Camaro sponsored by HBCU League Pass Plus. Right. You know who HBCU League Pass Plus is owned by? Kids, if you were paying attention, you should know this. The answer to that is UEN or Urban Edge Network. So... <laughs> Basically, the, 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 the broadcasting company that is owned by UEN is also the sponsor of the number 44 car, which is, of course, wrapped by the HBCU stuff. But I digress. Um, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Shit, there's right? more to this. There's more to this. <laughs> so, John Cohan. I'm, I'm sorry, John Cohen. I'm mispronouncing names over here. John mm -hmm. Cohen. A Gramlin State football alumnus is the owner of New York Racing. I think I told you that once before it was a Black-owned racing company. It was owned by HBC alum. Right. So this is where it gets more interesting. Like I said before, not only does um, Cohen, not only is Cohen the owner of New York Racing, he is also a marketing partner with Urban Edge Network. Wow. So yes, yeah, so that's mm. where that, those connections come in. This is but Go say counters that the collegiate licensing company or the CLC, a business that manages license, licensing royalties for college programs across the nation, and it's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I checked because I looked into doing some of these licensing agreements myself. Mm -hmm. So the CLC um, has what was the one that brokered the deal with the New York racing team uh, to use the fan use logo on the Biffle car. Now, according to um, Gaucher, uh, nobody from FAMU approved the logo to go in the car. And you don't need approval. Wait, no one from FAMU approved for the logo? No you one from FAMU approved. Yes. But the wow. thing is, though, if the deal is done through uh, the CLC, <laughs> you don't need yeah. for FAMU to do the approval because they the FAMU has already done the deal with the CLC. Right. And again, anyone who is who buys a licensing and gets approved through the CLC to use the university logos and the conference logos and the tournament logos or whatever it is they want to use it on, they can. Right. So all you need to do is have a, a deal with, with the CLC. So that goes back to, like I said before, Gauthier said that he, he never even had, um, that family never even approved because they didn't have to. Gauthier provided the Democrat with a copy of email chains uh, that included an apology to him from the CLC, citing confusion over the agreement. Yes, it may have been confusion, but you know what? CLC already owned the rights. They already had the agreement with the university. Duh. It also includes that Gaucher's email uh, to, it also includes within that email chain, Gaucher's email to FAMU leadership. So FAMU leadership can't say that they weren't involved in those emails because they're involved in the email chain. Ha! Now, this is coming from Gaucher again. Point of clarification. We reached out to CLC. I'm sorry, this is coming from... Yeah, this is coming from Gaucher. Point of clarification. We reached out to CLC for an agreement. And at that point, I stated I like the concept, but would need an agreement and term sheet. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. So this, this is confusing. So either mm. he, he they didn't go through FAMU to get the agreement, but they knew about. Oh my God, dude, this is crazy. They liked the concept of what was going to be done, but needed an agreement and term sheet, which was uh, needed to be approved and authorized by him or anyone at FAMU. I'm sorry, I take that back. I read that wrong. Basically, what he was saying was that uh, they needed the terms of agreement, but the thing was, it was never approved by or authorized by anyone from FAMU or by Gaucher. <sighs> so basically, again, I'm still saying, if your deal is done with the CLC, you don't need any agreement from the university. But yeah. I digress, dude. Um, again, coming from Gaucher, from my understanding, that agreement was um, was presented to our legal team and has not been approved. But damn it, that was months ago. Right. Uh, right. If you have such agreement or written approval by fam, you please provide such. But it's too late now. The card's already been wrapped and it's already been raised. That was a Daytona 500 back in early February. Correct. Dude, I'm going to need somebody to have some sort of accountability and have some sort of knowledge of what's going on because everyone's everyone's crying foul and saying that they don't know what's going on with all of this stuff going on. Right. Because basically, going back, one Grambling on that car, on Grand Purple's car earlier at, at Daytona? Yeah. So Grambling was, was the done, first car. I'm sorry, was Grambling, car. Grambling was the car at Daytona, but right. then the week later, it was FAMU. Right, correct. So the, with the, the one with Grambling, that was done through also through, whatchamacallit, right? That organization? Yeah, yeah they, they all went through uh, the CLC and, and, and Urban Edge Network, all all of those HBCUs that had 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 their logos wrapped on Biffle's car went through Urban Edge Network and was through, through the CLC. You can all you can get all their license through the CLC. Right. So basically, you put a touch on this. How does this affect the swap moving forward with the deals? Even even with the deals on the on the logos on the cars, and it, how does it how's where's the how does it for the lay for fly for the mid, the layman who went out there? How does it fit to the bigger picture? Or well, the, the, the biggest picture with the, with the lawsuit. The, the biggest picture has to be, of course, what's going on between the SWAC, um, uh, Byron Allen and his media group right. versus Urban Edge Network and the HBCU um, Pass Plus. So if 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 that somehow messes up that deal. That's supposed to mess up a lot of money in, in that 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 the SWAC is supposed to receive from the, the Allen Media Group. And I said before on this show that it's supposed to be um somewhere upwards of a hundred million. And of right. course, there's speculation on whether or not that number is true or not. I don't know if it's true. I haven't seen any reports. No one else has, has brought, uh, presented anything as of yet. So I guess we won't know until the agreement is, is actually made. Then I right. guess all this stuff is handled. But <clears throat> Oh my God! Um, I, 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 again, I don't know who to believe because no one is is, is taking accountability in the situation, be it Florida A and M or Courtney Gaucher, or on who is responsible. All I know is, in order for certain things to be done, certain signatures had to be placed on certain contracts, right. which includes Gaucher, um. Robinson, the, the, the president over there for the a and and the board of trustees. And once it's out of your hands, dog, anything can happen. And I'm going to need them to be more cognizant of that. Once it's out of your hands, if you sign a deal like that and it's out of your hands, anything can happen. That's like signing your, 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 your life away. You don't, you don't know what they're going to do with this. So, uh, so what do you, so this is a hot ass mess. Okay, so the hottest. Who, who? So okay, so basically, because remember, like I said, when this came to light a week or two ago, I thought the leadership of the SWAC potentially screwed this over because I was like, at first, I was like, well, they, they should they know, but sharing what you just shared, fam, you was doing own shit a long time ago. Yeah, 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 and I, I thought the same way too. 
that this should, this, there should have been some sort of, matter of fact, it, it still should have been some sort of communication from Florida and them and the SWAC to let the SWAC know what happens. But oh wait, there was, it's called a press release with Florida A&M and Grambling let it be known that they made these agreements with Urban Edge Network back in February. Correct. And right. then again, that's why I thought it's right because it was a if it was a press release, they should have been right there, like hold up, right? Yeah. So yeah, there should have been some conversations then on what the terms of the agreement was going to be with Urban Edge Network and with Florida and M. But again, according to what Gorsay said, the agreement only dealt with non-sporting events. Okay. Only coaches shows, marching band stuff, and the stuff like that. So it wasn't in necessarily in violation right. of what the SWAC and their contract deal was. Okay. So yeah, I, 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 I just it just boggles my mind that either there's no accountability, or there's a bunch of lying, or there's no understanding <laughs> of what these deals are truly. And I'm gonna need for somebody to have a better understanding of what's going on because I don't know. All right, so let's wrap this, this segment up but before you share other news at the HBC Sports World. What do you think is going to happen? Put on your, your natural dominance hat. What do, you, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think the fall is going to be, given what you just shared this evening? What do you think is going to be the Um, I, I still believe that the, you know, and, and I know a lot of people feel a particular way about individual institutions um, doing their deals. And my thing is this, do what's best for you fiscally. I've said this numerous times. Right. Whatever's better for you financially, do that, right? Right. I don't care who this deal is with. I don't care uh, 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 who has to do the deal, but with it, whatever, it is, whatever it is within the parameters of your contract with, with your conference or no, get the best deal possible. Sure. Make that dough. And I still believe that the SWAC is going to have this deal with uh, the, the Allen Media Group, I don't know if it's going to be this upwards of $100 million that um, they're alleging that it, it currently you is. Think, well, $65 million or whatever? Or is it less than that, you think? <sighs> I don't know. Because, again, sure. I was excited at the fact that they were capable of getting um, $100 because I'm like, dude, that's that's – that's under nine that about to be, school. Yeah, that 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 was gonna be a game changer. That was the case. Yeah, HBCUs right? alone in that conference is swag. Exactly, but you know the current deal that they currently have with ESPN is for like one point two annually. Right. So I don't I don't know what to believe. I don't. Yeah. I, 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 dude, I mean, if if we go in, in in between that, that's what fifty million. Yeah. Yeah. Over 10 years? Okay, but, you know, it, it, it'll be intriguing to see exactly what happens. My guess is that it's, God, I, dude, I don't know. I don't know. Because, again, another thing, that another conversation that we've had before in the past is the HBCUs and their conferences under um, evaluating what their worth is. Yeah. Which is another issue. Yeah, that's another issue for another time. And that's another issue we could, again, we'll come up with these topics for the upcoming HBC roundtable. That shit gonna be three parts, man. <laughs> it's gonna be insane because there's so much going on, and 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 so much that 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 has to be touched on. And I'm intrigued to see what other people's um, thought processes are about that. But let me hurry up and run through this last little bit of stuff real quick. Okay, go ahead, bro. So of course, you know, it's springtime outdoor track and field championships are going on as of right now. The Big South started today. Um, the MEAC and the SWAC start this weekend but we already have champions in other HBCU and HBCU dominated conferences in the, in the red river athletic conference, Xavier won both the men's and women's. So shout out to Xavier um, in the SAIC Benedict won the men's and women's in the CIAA Virginia state won the men's and Fayetteville state and Winston-Salem state both tied for the women's nice. and in the SWAC Prairie View A&M swept the SWAC. But we also have, before I go, we do have conference realignment news. Oh, Trumbo. <laughs> so an actual move that actually took place. Oakwood University and Southern University of New Orleans or uh, Sun U, Sun O will be joining the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference 
starting the 2022-2023 season. Those are two NAIA programs. Now, yes, I kind of teased that about, uh, of course, conference, conference realignment because everyone probably thought it was going to be another institution. But I right. will touch on that school, too. So remember when I said that there's been speculation that how it will be moving over to the CAA, right? Right, correct. Oh, man. Um, Sandra Steele just did an interview last week with my homie, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, over at the HBCU Sports Lab last week, talking about the current state of the MEAC. And in said interview, she basically said that Howard was going nowhere. Mm, she declared it. She declared that Howard was going nowhere. Now, does she, she affiliate with said, the school or is she just a media funder? No, she is the the, the MEAC commissioner. Oh, of course she's going to say that, right? Yeah, she basically said that the, the MEAC was going nowhere. But yeah. Not the MEAC, I'm sorry, but the hand, Howard, hand, hand, but Howard, Howard was yeah. going nowhere. Right. This is where it gets a little bit more intriguing. So, of course, social media posts with, 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 with Howard supporting the MEAC starts coming out that week. And then a, a statement comes out from the MEAC office with a quote, from the university president, my man, Dr. Frederick, over there at Howard University, a.k.a. F them kids, for all those that get that joke over there. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> especially man. as it pertains to the housing situation during the fall. But he basically came out and said that, hey, we're going to be here with the, with the MEAC in 2023, 20, uh, 2022, 2023. So basically for the next academic gear, Howard is still going to be there. But it doesn't say anything about 2023, 2024. Yeah. So yeah, I won't believe anything about Howard and their decision until July 31st, the end of the academic year, because at that point in time, institutions need to make a decision on their conference alignment and whether or not they're going to leave or not so they don't have to face a um, uh, 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 uh an additional fee for, for moving out of the conference. So yeah, as of right now, I'm believing that I'm believing Howard and Air Brass saying that they're gonna stay in the MEAC, but anything can happen past 2023. Anything. Yeah, it's it's a it's a matter of semantics for that, right? Uh yes. Yeah, it's semantics. Yeah, because the wording, like I said before, clearly stated 2022, 2023. You know what that means? That means how yeah. That's just me's how it's going. Yeah. So it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to have it to the dear old MEAC, but it's, it's, it's as you like to say, and like saying goes, it's what it is. Dude, I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. This is, this is exhausting. This is exhausting. Trying to figure out who's telling the truth and who ain't. Yeah, it it, 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 it shouldn't is. be this difficult. It shouldn't. And on that note, Let's call it, man. <laughs> Thank you for after this crazy ass HBC sports segment. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in to tonight's podcast. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe and share. Because sharing is caring. Um, if you want to hear more content like this, please continue to do so. Please continue to support the channel. Please check out the Wayne's cool stuff you see on the backdrop, yardhbcu.com. Um, also, these sports every Tuesday now on Facebook Live and YouTube. And last but not least, his great work on HeroSports.com. Check it out there. Got the merch, CafePress.com, Social Media Sports. Very much. So we'll have the links in the description on YouTube when we get this upload to YouTube, rather. And again, like I said before, and I'll say it again, please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You'd be glad you did. We'll be glad you did. And please hit that bell button so to so give you notifications of where such content will be uploaded during the week or any given period of time. So again, thank you all for tuning into tonight's podcast. Stay safe. Enjoy the NBA playoffs. We out.